Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Snails, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our 5-minute review playlist. In previous videos, we have talked about nephritic syndrome, nephrotic syndrome, acute otitis media, otitis media with effusion, and chronic suppurative otitis media. We talked about the differential diagnosis of ear pain, and we talked about mastoiditis. Today, let's talk about something that's usually less serious, otitis externa which is inflammation of the outer ear, also known as swimmer's ear, because swimming or water exposure in general is a risk factor. Let's get started. Please watch the videos in this playlist in order. First, let's answer the question of the previous video. Name three muscles that attach to the mastoid process of the temporal bone. These muscles are sternocleidomastoid, splenius and longismus capitis. A quick review on the anatomy of the ear. Your ear is made of three parts, external ear, middle ear, and internal ear. Otitis externa is inflammation of the external ear. Otitis media is inflammation of the middle ear. Otitis interna will be inner ear. The external ear is made of the auricle or the ear pinna, which is here, to collect those doozy sound waves. And then we have the external auditory canal or meatus, then your eardrum or tympanic membrane or membrana tympanica. And after that, we have the middle ear with the famous three bony ossicles, the eustachian tube which connects it to the nasopharynx. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, drop an ear emoji in the comments. As for the inner ear, it's for hearing and balance. Hearing is by the cochlea. Balance is by the three semicircular canals, utricle and saccule. It's the cochlea versus the vestibule. That's why the cranial nerve 8 is called the vestibulocochlear nerve or statoacoustic nerve. If you wish to download these doozy colorful notes, go to medicosisperfectionalis.com. I help you learn, understand, and pass exams. If you want me to personally tutor you, reach out to me on my website. We talked about otitis media before, which was inflammation of the middle ear, usually caused by streptococcus pneumonia, haemophilus influenzae, or morax cataralis. Infection of the middle ear is kind of dangerous because it can spread everywhere. It can spread upstairs to the brain, especially in young children, because the sutures between the petrous part of the temporal bone and the squamous part of the temporal bone is still unossified, making it easier for infection to spread to the brain, encephalitis, meningitis, cerebral abscess, etc. Also behind the middle ear, there is the aditus to the mastoid antrum, which will take me to the mastoid antrum and mastoid air cells, which can lead to spread of infection, mastoiditis. Just behind it, there is sigmoid venous sinus, so the infection can spread here as well, leading to sigmoid sinus thrombosis. And if that was not enough, remember that this is your styloid process, this is the mastoid process, both of which are parts of the temporal bone. Between them, there's what? Stylomastoid foramen, through which cranial nerve 8, the facial nerve, exits. So, otitis media can spread and cause Bell's palsy or facial nerve palsy, epsilateral paralysis of one half of the face. We talked about acute otitis media before. Please remember that these are the organisms. Acute and chronic otitis media can spread like crazy, whether intracranial or extracranial spread of infection. In otitis media, the tympanic membrane is bulging and abnormal, and there is absence of the normal cone of light. But in otitis externa, since the problem is only in the external ear, your tympanic membrane, which is part of the middle ear, should be normal, not bulging, not swollen, not erythematous, with no effusions behind it, i.e. no effusions in the middle ear. In the external ear, sure, but not in the middle ear. Otitis externa, it is swimmer's lung, so risk factors include water exposure or trauma to the external ear, such as cotton swabs, ear candling, and speaking of great habits, I've seen old men cleaning their external ear with their car keys. That's how bacteria get you. For embodying the external ear, such as headphones, hearing aids, and anything you can imagine, skin conditions like atopic dermatitis or contact dermatitis. The patient will complain of the following symptoms. Doctor, it hurts. My ear hurts a lot. And it's itchy. And sometimes it drains gunk. 
On physical exam, there is tenderness because it's itis, itis, acute inflammation, pay attention. Redness, hotness, swelling, pain, loss of function. Ruber, calor, tumor, dollar, functual assay. Try manipulating the patient's oracle and it's gonna hurt because it's part of the external ear, otitis externum. Conductive hearing loss can happen. Get your otoscope and look into the ear. You'll find debris, edema, and erythema in the external ear, not the middle ear. The tympanic membrane is healthy, intact, and spared. Diagnosis is clinical. The organisms are Pseudomonas and Staph aureus. Management is remove the gunk, topical antibiotics, and topical corticosteroids. And you might consider placing a wick to deliver these medications. So if foreign bodies are risk factors for otitis externa, how about your doctor's stethoscope? That's also a risk factor. Especially when doctors or medical students share them together because they want to listen to the diastolic rumbling murmur with pre-systolic accentuation, followed by a loud S1 heart sound. This otitis externa is bad, but wait. There is a specific subtype of otitis externa known as necrotizing or malignant otitis externa. Malignant here does not mean cancer, it just means so bad. This is a life-threatening osteomyelitis of the base of the skull. Dang. Usually the patient is old, diabetic, and his diabetes is poorly controlled. Severe ear pain. Itis, itis, acute inflammation, pay attention. Redness, hotness, swelling, pain, loss of function. Drainage of all kinds of gunk. You will see granulation tissue at the floor of the external ear canal. Organism, pseudomonas, hands down, very important. Management is clinical, radiological imaging can help you. Biopsy is usually not needed, but it's very accurate because this is osteomyelitis. Management, medical and surgical. Oh, I should give topical antibiotics, right? Topical? Shut up, the mortality rate is about 20% even after treatment. Go all in, intravenous antibiotics. Oh yeah, like for two weeks, like my amoxicillin that the dentist prescribed me? Shut up, six to eight weeks. It's an infection in the base of the skull that's going to the bone and the bone marrow. That's what the word myelo means. It means the core of the bone is inflamed and infected by Pseudomonas aeruginosa. What kind of antibiotics? Anti-pseudomonal antibiotics such as ciprofloxacin, the anti-pseudomonal penicillins, and the cephalosporin ciftazidine. Surgical debridement of the sequestrum because it's osteomyelitis. What the flip is the sequestrum? If you remember your pathology, osteomyelitis had two important buzzwords. Sequestrum, which is sequestered in the middle, and involucrum, which evolves around the sequestrum. And sometimes a sinus will form in the middle, and this will connect between the osteomyelitis and the outside world, facilitating the spread of infection. There is bacteremia, pyemia, subperiosteal abscess, all kinds of issues. If you want to learn about mastoiditis, check out my video titled Mastoiditis in this 5 minute review playlist. For more topics on ENT, such as neck masses, squamous cell carcinoma, conductive and sensory neural hearing loss, vestibular schwannomas, cholesteatomas, epistaxis, this wonderful comparison among all of these conditions, parotid tumors, mucorin rhizopus infection, orthopedic surgery, trauma surgery, and much more, download my surgery high yields course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. To learn more about ciprofloxacin, the anti-pseudomonal penicillins, all kinds of penicillins, cephalosporins, protein synthesis inhibitors, etc., check out my antibiotics course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. Help me make more videos by supporting my channel. Go to buymeacoffee.com slash medicosis. There are more than 600 premium videos available on this channel if you click the join button and choose the highest tier. Please subscribe, hit the bell, smash like, support my channel on Patreon, PayPal, or Venmo. Go to my website to download my courses, notes, and cases, or if you would like me to personally tutor you. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine, chemistry, math, and physics make perfect sense.